Welcome to Scaling Up, the podcast for water treaters by water treaters, where we're scaling up on knowledge so we don't scale up our systems. Hi everybody, Trace Blackmore here, and happy 2019. Can you believe it? A brand new year is here, and we now need to know what we are going to do to make ourselves better this year than we were last year. What are we gonna to do to make the water treatment industry better this year than it was last year? So on today's episode, I'm gonna share with you a bunch of industry-related organizations that if you either join or attend their trade shows, these organizations might give you a leg up on where you were last year. So I want you to think about how did last year go? And I shared on the last episode a year in review for me, and I always like to review how last year went before I start setting goals for the current year. So take a moment and acknowledge all of the accomplishments that you have done and what you learned from those and then apply that to what you're going to do this year. Now, I don't know how many of you have a personal mission statement. I don't know if I've ever shared mine with you over Scaling Up, but I'll go ahead and do that. I will share my personal mission statement with the Scaling Up Nation. It is very simple. It's simply to end each day knowing that it was better than the last. I want to know that I'm continuously learning and I'm using what I am learning to make tomorrow better. I don't always succeed, but I'm always looking for ways to do that. So that's what we're doing this year. How can we make 2019 better than 2018? So let's actually go through the calendar, and I'm going to share some organizations with you that maybe you've heard of, maybe some you haven't heard of, but here's the thing, you now know about them. So if you want to attend the trade show, that's great. You can do that. At the very least, you can go on their website. You can find out more about these organizations, maybe subscribe to their newsletter. They have publications like magazines. They have committees that you can join. There's a whole host of items that you can get from these organizations to make you better in the water treatment industry. So let's go ahead and get started. So in January, we have the ASHRAE Conference. ASHRAE stands for the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. And their conference is January 14th through 16th in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, a lot of us have heard of ASHRAE because they are the first ones to come out with a Legionella standard. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of information about Legionella at that conference, so maybe that's one that you want to check out. Another one is the ABMA conference. That's the American Boiler Manufacturers Association. That is in January 18th through the 21st, and that is in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. That takes us to February. In February, we have the CTI conference. CTI stands for the Cooling Technology Institute, and their conference is going to be February 10th through 12th in New Orleans, Louisiana. And then the Association of Water Technologies, you know I probably speak about the AWT more than any other organization here on Scaling Up H2O. They are having their first meeting ever for business owners on February 21st through 22nd in New Orleans, Louisiana. So if you are a water treatment business owner and you want to take advantage of getting together with other business owners, they've got a great agenda put together so you can get together with other business owners and hopefully when you get back, make your business better. So you might want to check that out. Also with the Association of Water Technologies, we have the technical training coming up. For those of you out there that are studying for your certified water technologist, that's a great thing to go ahead and bone up on some knowledge. You can take the technical training. For those of you that already have your CWT designation, it is a great resource for you to pick up 15 continuing education units. So I am just amazed at how many people still don't know 
that they can get 15 continuing education units by going to AWT's technical training conference. It is one of the best things out there for water treatment in the industrial water treatment industry that I am in. And then hopefully you can find another organization that has a like certification if you are not in the same type of water industry that I'm in. So now for those of you that are new in the water treatment industry, there is a fundamentals and applications class that uh, I'm privileged to teach with Mark Lewis and a couple of other guys. And that is by far one of the best ways to learn the foundations of what it means and what you have to do in the water treatment industry. So that brings us to March. And in March, we have the NACE conference. NACE stands for the National Association of Corrosion Engineers. And their conference is going to be March 24th through 28th. And that's going to be in Nashville, Tennessee. And then the AWT is repeating the technical training seminars, both the fundamentals and applications, as well as the technical training. And they are also doing wastewater this year. So they're doing those at both segments. So if you have not attended the wastewater training, by far one of the best in the industry, later this year, you're going to hear a awesome explanation of what to do when you're trying to learn about a wastewater location from Kevin Cope. He is amazing. He is one of the several trainers that we have at the Association of Water Technology. So again, that's going to be March 27th through the 30th in Annapolis, Maryland. Then that brings us to April. We're getting through the calendar pretty quickly. So the IFMA conference, which stands for the International Facilities Management Association, they're going to have their conference April 8th through 10th, and that's going to be in my hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. And then the Water Quality Association is having their conference on April 23rd through 25th in Las Vegas, Nevada. That brings us to June. In June, uh, we have the Aquatech China Conference. Now, these folks asked me to attend their conference to speak last year. Unfortunately, I had another AWT event already scheduled, and I was not able to make it. But I did learn a lot about their organization, their conference. It's a really good one if you are international. So that's Aquatech China, June 3rd through 5th in Shanghai, China. And then we have the American Waterworks Association's convention. That's June 9th through 12th in Denver, Colorado. Also in June, we have the International Water Association Conference, and that's going to be in Edinburgh, Scotland. So if you're over in the UK, that's a great one for you to attend. The Building Owners and Managers Association International Conference is June 22nd through 25th. That's going to be in Salt Lake City, Utah. And then in September, that is the Association of Water Technologies Annual Convention and Expo. That's going to be September 11th through 14th in Palm Springs, California. I'm going to attend several of these, I think, but this is one that I definitely know that I am going to attend. I will be at the Association of Water Technologies Convention, and this is where I meet so many of my listeners. And of course, you get to meet them too, because a lot of times I will record people that I meet at the AWT. So I look forward to that, and I hope to see you there. That brings us to November, and in November we have the International Water Conference. That's going to be November 10th through 14th in Orlando, Florida. And then on November 20th through 22nd, the United States Green Building Council is doing Green Build. This is the largest green building convention there is in the world. Green Build is going to be in Atlanta, Georgia this year. So if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, November 20th through 22nd, I highly recommend you go to Green Build. So many cool things that they have there, and they're always releasing something new each and every year. As I said at the top of the show, each one of these organizations have their own publications, they have newsletters, they have committees, they have things that you can do within them that will allow you to start learning more about the water treatment industry. It will also allow you to meet other people in the water treatment industry. 
So if you don't have a mentor yet, maybe you can start going to some of these conferences. Maybe you can just start reaching out to some of the people that are members of these organizations in your community and you can start to meet perhaps your future mentor or maybe somebody that you can mentor. I also mentioned how important certification is several times on shows last year. Each one of these organizations have certifications that you can aspire to get. You know how important I think the certified water technologist is for people in my type industry. So these other organizations have one that may suit you better. So I ask that you look into some of these organizations and see which one fits you best. Of course, it's the new year. Everybody's thinking about New Year's resolutions, and I hate the term New Year's resolutions. Resolutions is an old Latin word that translates into forgotten in two weeks. I don't like resolutions. What I like our goals. And we're going to talk about goal setting. So what are your goals going to be in 2019? And how can you use a tool that I use on a regular basis to make sure that you're accomplishing your goals? Simply put, and I'm sure you've heard this before, a goal without a plan is simply a dream. And a dream, when you wake up, simply evaporates. And eventually you forget about it. So don't forget about your dreams, plan them, and we will execute those goals. So this is how I like to do this. I always like to celebrate the end of the year with all of the accomplishments that I had in the previous year. And I shared that with you on the last episode. So again, take some time out and relish the accomplishments that you had the previous year. Now, once you're done celebrating those, think about what you learned by accomplishing those goals. If you were to do those over again, what would you do different? What did life teach you that would make it easier if you had a second chance to accomplish those goals? Write those items down because those are lessons that you learn that are going to be utilized when you make your goals for this year. Now, as far as goals go, how many do you have? And I really feel that people overload themselves when it comes to goals for a certain time period. So what are my goals for 2019 or the first quarter or each quarter? I don't like to over inundate myself with too many goals because if there's too many, there's no way I can work on all of them. So folks, if you're not good at this, choose one and make sure that it is executed superbly. Maybe it's a larger goal that it's going to take you an entire year to do. Maybe it's a goal that's just going to take you a quarter, 90 days to do. And then maybe you have four of those throughout the year. Maybe those build onto each other to accomplish your ultimate goal. Whatever it is, it needs to be personal to you and it needs to help you with what you are trying to achieve. And then I'm going to share a tool that I use called SMART. And SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time Bound. So let's look at each one of those. So now I have this goal, how can I SMART it? The first step is to specifically state what you are going to accomplish. Now here's the thing, you need to capture what you are trying to achieve in words so when you look at what that says, it inspires you to the end of the entire process. So a specific goal is distinct and it's defined. You're gonna think about things, who is involved? What do I want to accomplish? Where will it be done? Why am I doing this? What are the reasons for it? What's the purpose that I'm doing that? And what are the constraints that I have? What requirements do I have? All the various things. You're going to look at this, you're going to step back, and you're going to visualize what this looks like when it's all said and done, and you're going to create a specific statement based on that. The next item in SMART is measurable. So how are you going to demonstrate and evaluate that the goal is being done? So what are the metrics that you're going to attach to this? 
what are the specific tasks and time that you need to do in order for you to accomplish that goal. These are all the measurables that you know that you are accomplishing that goal. For example, if you are taking the CWT, the specific might be that I will have my certified water technologist designation by September 29th. And now I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to think, okay, what do I need to do in order to get that certificate by that time? And I might look at some of the technical trainings that we just talked about. And I want to make sure that I go to at least one of those technical trainings. But before I do, I'm going to look at the PowerPoint slides that are available before you go to those classes. And I want to make sure that all of the items that are being discussed, I'm already familiar with them. I want to talk with somebody who's mentoring me through this process, and I'm going to ask them questions about what they did to get their CWT. I want to do all of these things, and I'm going to know what I need to do first before I start the next item, and I'm going to assign dates to those, and then I'm going to know whether I'm on track or off track with each one of those tasks that I need to do. Now, if I'm on track, great. If I'm off track, it's not the end of the world. I just need to readjust what I'm doing so I can get back on track. A lot of people don't do that step and they get off track and they never come back. So don't be upset if you are off track. It's actually a good thing. If you are constantly looking at what your goals are and when you need to accomplish them by and you realize that you were too lofty in your goals or you didn't account for a life change that you had, well, life is teaching you how to better go after that goal with all the things that you are now experiencing. So use that, redo your goals, redo your timeline, and you can very easily be back on track so we can hit that deadline that we set in September. The next thing is achievable. Is this something that I can really achieve? Now let's say I have 15 different life things that are going on that are really taking every bit of spare time away from me and I still want to do that goal. I need to evaluate each and every Every one of those things that are pulling me away from tackling this goal and make sure that it really is achievable. Now, achievable doesn't mean easy either. I need to make sure that I'm stretching and challenging myself. So I should be better because this goal has been accomplished. Is it relevant? So based on my day to day as a water treater, is this going to help my career? If I do this goal and it gets done, is that going to make me better at what I do? Is that going to give me an advantage at what I do? Is that going to be a stepping stone so I can do something else? How does it relate to my overall long term plans? Is it relevant. And then finally, time bound. So is it bound that I know that it needs to be done in a certain amount of time and I know what the tasks are building up to that when those things are due, but I especially know when it is going to be completed by. And I'll go ahead and talk about the certified water technologist examination again. I recommend that if that is one of your goals to get one of the certifications, that as you're planning and when you come up with a date and you feel really good about what that date is that you're going to take the examination, right then and there, a whole year in advance maybe, you are going to register for that examination. You're going to put money down on it. And that is going to make sure that you have a sense of urgency and it's going to make sure that you stay time bound. Well, I've been using SMART in my company and in my personal goals for years now, but this might be a new concept for you. So if you go to scalinguph2o.com forward slash SMART, you can download a form that I've created that will walk you through some of these items. One of the goals that I have, and I know this is no surprise to anybody out there in the Scaling Up Nation, is I always try to read more. 
And I had a great year last year as far as all the books that I read. I will tell you that having the podcast and making sure that I'm always getting more information so I can talk to you fine folks about what's going on in the industry and what's going on in business, it does force me to read, but I also am in my car so much just like you, and we have all that windshield time. That's why Scaling Up, I think, is so popular because we can listen to it in our cars, get a little bit more savvy about water treatment, maybe energize us a little bit more before we go in to talk to that customer. But in between shows, what do we listen to? Well, folks, you've heard me talk about it before. I love the service Audible. And I use Audible to read probably 70% of all of the books that I read last year, the year before that. And I've probably been using Audible for about three years now. So if you want to try Audible out, I can get you a free month and a free book by going to scalinguph2o.com forward slash Audible. If you like it, you can keep the service. And if you don't, you can cancel it. It won't cost you anything. But I tell you, I would not be able to read as much as I do without Audible. So go ahead and give it a try. Finally, my ask for everybody out there in the Scaling Up Nation is for you the nation to help me, the host, make Scaling Up H2O what you want it to be. So what do you want Scaling Up H2O to be in 2019? What topics do you want me to talk about? What questions do you have for me? What are some of the guests that you want me to interview? When you let me know these items, I know that my shows are targeted right at you. So please, you can go to scalinguph2o.com and let me know what your show idea is. And to sweeten the deal, I have decided to reward those people that leave me a voicemail. Now you say, how do you leave a voicemail on a web page? Well, you can do it on your phone. You can do it on your computer. You go to scalinguph2o.com. On the right side, there's a button that says voicemail. You click on that. You can record yourself asking your question to me. If I use that on the air, I will reach out to you and I will send you a scaling up t-shirt. Folks, if you haven't seen the t-shirt, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on it. You can go to scalinguph2o.com and look at the show notes for this page and you can see what this t-shirt looks like. There is not a water treater out there that would not want a t-shirt like this. So help me give it to you by helping me bring scaling up into 2019, knowing that we've got a ton of topics to talk about and they're the right topics because they're coming from you. Now folks, my plea to you is that you make 2019 better than 2018. You make yourself better today than you were yesterday. And you make the water treatment industry better because you are part of the water treatment industry. Have a great 2019, folks, and I'll see you next week.